In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon virtual assembly. So glad that we are able to join each other in this way to spend time in God's Word. If you will, go ahead and open to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll be there together in just a moment. This morning we looked at the end of chapter 4, where Paul is talking about, well, when Christ comes again, how that those who have died, those who are asleep, will not be prevented from going to heaven because they have died. In fact, they will rise first, and then those of us who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them, and that we'll meet the Lord in the air, and thus will always be with the Lord. And he says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. So Paul is reminding them and encouraging them to stay strong with God, to stay faithful throughout their life, because they will have their home in heaven. They won't be without hope. They'll have hope, that promise that they can be with God. So it continues, though, in chapter 5, verse 11, with the same thought. They're wondering, I suppose, when the Lord will return. If he hasn't come right then, when is he going to come? If he is not going to come in their lifetime, is he going to come? When will that going? When is that going to be? It's a question that, that people have been asking and dealing with, well, since then. In fact, I remember in my lifetime, in my ministry lifetime, in the late 80s, that there was discussion about how Christ would return in September, I think it was 1988. And then when September rolled through and it didn't happen, they changed, well, we meant October. And, and then when it didn't happen in October, well, we've misread this. It's supposed to be in 89. And then 89 passed, it didn't happen. And then then I, I remember something in the year 2000 that was going to happen. And years between that and years since, people have talked about this certain year, this per particular day, this particular time is when Christ is going to return. And they're looking for signs. They're looking for things to try to predict when that's going to happen. The problem is that the signs that they use are often misunderstood from the Bible. This isn't a lesson to get in and all of that, but when the Bible, <coughs> excuse me, when the Bible talks about certain signs, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes and things, and the moon turned to blood, many times those are referring to the destruction of Jerusalem that occurred in AD 70 and really have nothing to do with Christ returning and claiming those who are his and us going on to be with God in heaven. There is something else going on there. And, and like I said, this isn't the time to deal with that. But just to kind of give you a hint, when you see that specifically in Matthew, that's what it's talking about. But what about other things? What about the Antichrist? Well, John writes about the Antichrist, mostly in 1 John. And when he, when he writes about the Antichrist, he says, as he writes in the middle end of the first century A.D., he says, Antichrist have already come. So don't look for an Antichrist now to be the signs of the end of the time because they've existed since the first century. Antichrist, Antichrist are those who are against Christ, those who deny that he is the Son of God. And so if there's someone who denies that, they are Antichrist. So John is saying they existed then, they exist now. That is the spirit of the Antichrist or the spirit of Antichrist. And it existed then, so we really, if you want to take that in consideration, we've really been in the last days for the last 2,020 years, give or take. And I know for some of us, well, that doesn't sound last days, that sounds like last millennia. Well, a, a day could refer to a time period. So this is the last of days. There will be no dispensation after this. We've had the patriarchal, the mosaic, now we're in the Christ Christian dispensation. And so this is the last time period. Paul does, though, write about the end of time. He does so here in chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. And the first thing he says is, don't worry about when. Don't worry about the when. Look at verse 1 through 3. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need of anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. When they are saying peace and safety, 
Then destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman who is pregnant, and they will never escape. When is not as important as knowing that he will return. Paul says it's not important that you know when, it's important that you know he does. And when he does, it will be sudden. It'll be sudden like a thief in the night. You know, I've never known, never read of a thief who called ahead of time and said, I'd like to make an appointment to rob your house. Uh, yes, I'm here to make an appointment to rob your business. Uh, excuse me, are you going to leave your car out all night and unlock because I'm looking for stuff? <laughs> they don't do that, do they? They come and when you really least expect it. And then he compares it to a woman in labor. You, the, the woman knows that the labor pains are going to come. That's part of the process. But when they do come, they come on suddenly. There aren't any warning signs. And that's what, what God is saying, or what Paul is writing about, inspired by God, inspired by the Spirit, to tell us it, we're not here to worry about when Christ comes, as in the specific day. But it's more important that we know he's going to come and we are prepared to for that event. We are to be ready always. Look at verses 4 through 8 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 4 through 8. But you, but you brothers, are not in darkness that the day would overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. So then let us not sleep as others, but let us be awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we are the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. We don't have to live in the dark. We don't have to be outside of the know. We know Christ is going to return. We may not know when, but again, that's not important. The important thing is he is coming. Are we living in expectation of his coming? So be enlightened and be ready. Live life knowing that's going to happen. Stay focused, stay sober in your living for God. And that comes with faith. Trusting God's word. Trusting that what he says that you are to be and to do is what is right for you as you get ready for his return. So put that trusting faith in him and that love for God. Doesn't Jesus say that the greatest command is to love the Lord your God with everything that you are? And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. So let's be those loving people that God wants us and desires for us and plans for us to be. Faith and love. And then as a helmet, that hope, that promise, that expectation of salvation that we can live confident in Christ. It's not about the specific when. It's about that he will. And because he will return, are we living ready, anticipating that return? And when we are, we can take comfort in his return. Look at verses 9 through 11. For God has not appointed us for wrath, but, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, comfort one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing. This ties back into this being dead already before Christ returns or being alive when he returns. It ties back in, he says, whether you have died or whether you are alive. The point is that you're ready. And because you're ready, there is great comfort. We are not appointed to wrath. This is not the Christian's future. Wrath. And when I think of the wrath of God, I think of some of the Old Testament stories. I think of maybe Sodom and Gomorrah, where God rained down fire upon those two cities. I think of the sons of Korah, where the earth swallowed them up. I think of Achan and the punishment there. When I turn to the New Testament, I maybe I, I think of um, Ananias and Sapphira and they're lying to God and lying to the Holy Spirit and then dying on the spot. And when I read those stories, that's the wrath of God. But what that is, that's the wrath of God diluted. In the book of Revelation, John talks about how God is going to 
God's wrath is going to be revealed without measure. In other words, not diluted. Full strength. And if Sodom and Gomorrah and the sons of Korah and Achan and, and, and Ananias and Sapphira are God's wrath diluted, I don't want to experience God's full undiluted wrath. That is the hell prepared for devil, the devil and his angels. I don't want that for me. I don't want that for you. And as a Christian, that does not have to be our future. In fact, for the Christian, we can take comfort in knowing that Christ is our Savior, our Deliverer, from the wrath of God. The question is, not when is he coming, but since he is coming like a thief in the night, am I ready? Peter might say it this way, seeing that these things are so, what type of person ought you to be in godliness and holiness? Are you ready? Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, I thank you so much for your long suffering. And Father, we know that one day you will come. As Peter would remind us, you're not slack or slow concerning your promise, but are long suffering, not willing that any should perish. Father, help us to take advantage of that long-suffering patience right now at this moment because you are patient hoping giving us the opportunity to come to you and to reach out to others who need to come to you father as we read your word and we see your wrath we know that one day you will be coming in judgment Father, though we do not know when, help us to know and help us to know that you will and help us to be ready starting at this moment, starting today. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for the grace that gives us that expectation, that hope of heaven. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Hebrew writer will ask the question, will make the challenge. Today is the day of salvation. This moment. Will you take advantage of this moment? If you're not a child of God, I plead with you to reach out to me and let's talk about you and God and make sure that when he returns, which could be any moment now, could be years from now, to make sure you're ready as a child of God. Make sure you're living ready for his mo his sudden return. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you, if not in this lifetime, in the life to come. Thank you again. Until the next time we're together, I'll pray that God will bless your day. Here in the power.